Officially known as the Millennium Dam and often regarded as the Hydas Dam, the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam is found on the blue and is a gravity dam in Ethiopia whose construction began since 2011. It is located in Benishangul Gumuz, 45 km east of the border with Sudan. Before we see how the gravity dam almost emptied the Nile, it's important that we understand the background of this grand establishment. During the Blue Nile survey between 1954 and 1956, in the reign of Haile Selassie, the United States Bureau of Reclamation carried out a survey on the Blue Nile and discovered the suitable sites for the Grand Renaissance Dam. The project failed to grow due to the 1974 coup d'etat and the 17-year-long Ethiopian Civil War. Situated over 2,500 kilometers downstream of the dam site, Egypt was against the construction of the dam, believing that it will lessen the quantity of water provided by the Nile. Centered on an unidentified discovery that the dam will lead to a reduction in the availability of water downstream, and also irrigation will be regulated Zanawi also brought up an argument. On the 30th of March 2011, the 4.8 billion US dollar project was handed without competition to the Italian company Salino and Pregillo and was officially made public. Its foundation stone was planted by the Prime Minister, Meles Zanawi, on the 2nd of April 2011, and a rock crushing plant with a minimized airstrip was immediately built for rapid transportation. It was later announced that the blueprints for the downstream impact examination would be shared by Ethiopia and Egypt. Originally, the dam was referred to as Project X. It later on became the Millennium Dam after the contract was made public, and on the 15th of April, it was renamed to the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam by the Council of Ministers. Welcome to Think Rich Africa, the community which brings to you entrepreneurial, business and personal development content to inform, motivate and inspire you. We also want to introduce you to our special African development playlist because we strongly believe that entrepreneurship, rather than global PT, is the key to Africa's growth and development. So if you're African and aren't subscribed to our community, you're missing out. Design of the Dam Severally, the design of this Grand Dam was changed between 2011 and 2017, and so both electricity and storage frameworks were affected. In 2011, the hydropower plant was initially to receive 15 generating units with 350 megawatts nameplate capacity which will result in a total installed potential of 5,250 gigawatts hour per year. It was later on increased to 6,000 megawatts. 450 megawatts was later added in 2017, making it a total of 6,450 megawatts, with a plant power generation of 16,153 gigawatts hour per year which was achieved by stepping up 14 of the 16 generating units from 375 megawatts to 400 megawatts without alternating its nominal capacity. Following the storage framework as well, the dam was originally designated in 2011 to be 145 meters with a volume of 10.1 million meters cubed. The volume of the reservoir was as well designed to be 66 km cube, and the surface area 1,680 square kilometers at complete supply. The Rockfield Saddle Dam was also designed to have a height of 45 meters and length of 4,800 meters. These values were changed to final parameters in 2017 of 10,200,000 meters cube structural volume, 
170 meters height and 40 kilometers from the border with Sudan, supported by a 4.9 kilometer long and 50 meter high rock hill saddle dam. With a black top finish to maintain a dry interior, the saddle dam is at 600 meters above sea level and is closer to the border than the main dam. At full supply, the reservoir at the back of both dams will have a storage capacity of 74 kilometers cubed and a surface area of 1,874 square kilometers, 640 meters above sea level. Dam construction. Estimated to cost close to 5 billion US dollars, and about 7% of the Ethiopian 2016 Gross National Product, the Ethiopian Grand Renaissance Dam lacks international support due to Egypt's campaign to keep control over the Nile water share. Ethiopia has financed the dam with crowdfunding through internal fundraising by selling bonds and persuading employees to contribute a portion of their incomes. The Exim Bank of China supported the total cost with 1 billion US dollars for turbines and electrical equipment. We build an Italian company which served as primary contractor for the Gilgal Giba II, Giba III, and Tana Belles is the main contractor for the Grand Renaissance Dam, while Seneg New Belele has been the project manager since the beginning of the project up until his death on the 26th of July 2018. The dam is anticipated to need 10 million cubic meters of concrete, which the government has promised to use only domestically produced concrete. In March 2020, the steel works reached 35% complete, civil works 87% complete, while the electromechanical works were just 17% complete. The first phase of filling the reservoir was completed in July 2020 with a target of 4.9 cubic kilometers from its 74 cubic kilometers on completion. With estimates arriving the point of 573 and retaining no more than 4.5 cubic kilometers. The second phase of filling the GERD reservoir was completed in July 2021. About the Nile Following the Congo Basin, the Nile is the second voluminous basin in Africa, which makes its way across 11 countries, comprising Burundi, Democratic Congo, Egypt, Ethiopia, Eritrea, Kenya, Rwanda, South Sudan, Sudan, Tanzania, and Uganda. Its two main origins for water distribution are the Eastern Nile 9 Ethiopia, from which 85% flows, and the Eastern Equatorial Nile, from which only 15% of the flow comes. The Blue Nile Basin is distinguished by its extremely irregular topography and substantial disparity in altitude. Its elevation ranges from 4,000 meters in the headwaters of some tributaries to 700 meters at the bottom of the plateau. The Nile depicts a critical resource for the economy of eastern and northeastern Africa. As a consequence of population persuasion, hydrological fluctuation, and the aspiration of the economic development of the upstream countries, water is appearing to be a vital resource in the entire basin. The abundance and uses of the water resources in the Nile are irregularly divided amongst the countries. Even though 85% of the Nile waters come from Ethiopian highlands, Egypt and Sudan are the most consumers of water from the Nile, with significant irrigation in their countries. Benefits of the Dam However, paramount to all other profits of the dam is the manufacturing of hydropower. The total energy produced by the GERD will move to Ethiopia's national grid to entirely support the development of the country in both rural and urban areas. The function of the GERD is to be a sustaining foundation of the Ethiopian national grid. Excesses which are predicted to occur during the rainy season 
when there is an increase in water for hydropower generation will result in exportation to buyers in the neighboring countries, including Sudan and possibly Egypt, but also Djibouti. As an effect, huge transmission lines to top utilization points will be established. The capacity of the reservoir will be over two times that of Lake Tana, and so up to 7,000 tons of fish are predicted to be harvested from it annually, making it a potential touristic destination. Despite its state of incompletion, the Ethiopian Grand Renaissance Dam has numerous noticeable impacts on the Nile and the neighboring countries some of which are already being deliberated on as early as sin. The project is one which, if well established in peaceful collaboration with everyone's link to the area, will benefit the surrounding countries and Africa as a whole. Our message is that of encouragement. Positive change for Africa is here, not just for us, but for our generations. If you enjoyed watching this video, Please don't forget to subscribe and become an official member of our growing diverse community here on Think Rich Africa. Thanks for watching and see you in another exciting video.